bow their heads and pray this way. And say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you are the Savior. I know that you are the Savior. You died on the cross for my sins. You died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. I choose today to follow you, Jesus. I choose today to follow you, Jesus. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. It's my Savior and Lord. My Savior and Lord. It's my God and my friend. God, my friend. In your name, Jesus, I pray. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Lord, on the land and be on his faithfulness. You see, these kinds of promises are promises that we hold on to when it comes to our needs, when it comes to our provision. It doesn't mean that money, God. It can be whatever the situation is. There are these great promises in the Word of God that we need to have before us and live in and hear.
beautiful she name it is, is the name of Jesus. Jesus. What does Jesus do? He says, man doesn't live by bread alone. He didn't want heaven without Jesus, you Good luck. Sin was great to love. She blinks. Right? He's got no power. Yeah. He's got power. So now, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. We need to know that we're not a defeated people. We have great power by the Holy Spirit presence in us. God gives us this power. That's why we're going to walk in the Spirit. We're going to walk being led by the Spirit. It's not about that. Faith is not feeling. We must abide or live in His Word. Hebrews 11 says this, church. I want you to listen to this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the, the evidence of things not seen. What does that mean? Faith is the realization. It's the realization of what we are hoping for when we pray. And it's the, it's the confidence of things not seen. It's the confidence that what we pray is going to manifest, is going to happen. See, that's the position of a child of God. That's the position of, 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 of you Trusting in the word of God of how we are to be how to walk in faith. It's saying, okay, this is what faith is made up of. It's the realization of what we're hoping for. In other words, we're saying, God, I believe your word, not by what I see. The heavens are This is faith. It's the confidence that what we pray is going to happen. It's confidence. It's a boldness. It's a confidence. Even though it doesn't look like it. Right now, we're, we're praying. I'm asking everyone to pray for you. That's a bold request. There's so many obstacles to that. Believe you me, you know the devil tries to destroy me. Who's this? 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 That place of, of realization of what we're hoping for when we pray doesn't happen yet. The realization hasn't come to pass yet, but it's going to be. Amen. I trust the Lord. It's going to be. So it's a confidence. It's a place of confidence in God. I know that you do not live by our What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Spiritually, church, we're always happy. Here's how we feel. Here's how we feel. We're filled by God's Word. We're filled by His Spirit. We're filled by the fullness of God. Jesus is the Son of God, and when we receive Christ, He gave us the authority to become sons and daughters of God. Amen. All the promises that go along with this sonship. It's really what it is. I'm not excluding you know, the that. But we understand what this means. This is part of what eternal life is. Your hidden glory in creation. You're part of now revealed with all the rights and all the authority that sonship holds. All the rights of becoming this royal priesthood, becoming part of by the word or hearing the word. We hear it on Sunday, but also we hear it throughout the week as we take it in, as we consume it, as we live in it. We need to hear the word of God. We desperately need God's word in our lives. Amen. We need the word of God. Sometimes our feelings distract. Oh, I know that. Sometimes my feelings try to distract me. Sometimes I'm like, okay, God, we're here. And if we set about to look for just feelings, we're going to miss out. We come into the house of God and say, okay, I want to feel good today, God. And you're sitting there going, I don't feel good today. This word's kind of hard. I don't know. I don't feel good. 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 I don't
Many times we will not feel. But I have found it is more about hearing church. It's more, amen, 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 Brandon. It's more about hearing the truth. It's more about the wonderful name. It is the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. Of unbelief. Of unbelief. No matter how you hear it in your heart and mind, when unbelief comes to you, it's saying the same thing that the serpent said to Eve and to Adam with her. I know many times when I pray for people, and this is something that the Holy Spirit really spoke strongly to me, but when I pray for people, I've heard a small voice of unbelief try to come at me. See, now I'm more aware of it. And I know to take authority over to find it. And loosen. You silence the boast. I've seen it great. Many times you have been praying. The praise of your glory. The praise of your glory. Did God really say? For you are raised to life again. Is that right? Is that actually correct? You, you have understand no all these things from the Word of God. You have no ego now and forever. As our faith grows, tempting Eve along with Adam, prior to this, there was sin was the king. He tempted them from the, the outside. So they didn't have any the sin inside of them. This is hard for us as people to grasp because we know. The Bible tells us sin starts inside of us. It starts as a seed. And that's where we have to make that conscious choice in the Lord to say no. That thing's dying right now. In the name of Jesus. Taking the glory away from that thought that tries to come at us. But Adam and Eve didn't have it. They were sinless. That's what God made them name it is. But yet... He comes and he tempts them. Jesus, what a Satan challenged their faith. The what did he do? He said, Did God Jesus. really say? And their conscience as well. But it's the Holy Spirit. He's going to be speaking the word of God. That's how you're going to know that this is the Lord. This is the Lord who's speaking the word to me. He's reminding me of what Jesus said. And I need to follow. I need to obey. This is why the word of God teaches us. How we must remember what God says. We must remember the Word of God, especially as we're battling faith. In, in, a, in a faith situation, we're battling. It's a, it's a battle of faith, in other words. When the Lord was preparing the next generation of Israel to enter the Promised Land, He reminded them to remember the Lord their God. He reminded them to keep His commandments. Their parents were, were, were to die in the wilderness, in the desert, because unbelief. The reason that they could not enter the promised land was because they could not believe. They had little faith and they were not willing to believe that their faith could grow. They didn't want that faith power. That comes from the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what I'm encouraging us as the family, as God's people. This is what we all need to live in. Says your pastor, I'm a messenger. It doesn't mean that I don't deal with these things. But I do deal with these things as well. But I also know that I need to stir the family up as well, the flock, to hear the word of God. Because as I'm speaking this way, my desire is that you will speak this way. Because I need to hear you speak that way to me as well. Amen. So where does unbelief come from? Well, first of all, we know that it's the result of the fall. We know that it's the result of what happened to the Prior to this, you are my disciples. And when you're my disciples, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free, is what Jesus says. Amen. If you want to know the truth, and you want to be free in the truth of God, Jesus says you first have to be a disciple of Jesus. And the only way you can be a disciple of Jesus is when you live in his word. When his word is living inside of you. Living in your mind. Living in your lips. Living in your heart. 
where you're stating it, where you're saying when a problem comes up, you don't, you don't uh, complain or, or get all vexed, but you say, Lord, I thank you that your word tells me that I'm to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, by supplication, with thanksgiving, that means I don't get bitter, but I stay thankful, Lord God, and that I make my request known to you. I go pray. I go talk to you. I go bring my request to you. And I speak with you. And I say, Lord, small faith he also teaches us that our small faith, if we can believe, if we can just keep getting back up, so to speak. Don't give up in it, but keep pressing in it. Keep asking the Lord. Keep praying. Keep stating it. Continuing to walk in Him. Our small faith has the potential to become big. And sometimes that's the position of faith that we need to have. It's like, Lord... I know right now my faith is small, but Lord, I believe one day my faith is going to be big. And so, Lord, right now, this is an opportunity for my faith to grow. And I'm going to believe you at your word. See, this kind of talk, that's faith talk. That's kingdom talk. That kind of talk comes from when you're taking in the word of God. And you're reading, you're living in the word of God. You can't have that kind of talk, that kind of faith, if we're starving, if we're spiritually starving. With the word of God, we're not taking it in. Pray. Right? Things just happen. Right? God just moves. Powerful. Sovereign. Because he's so good. Because he loves you. Sometimes just you just prayed it. And you prayed in faith and it happened. God's God moved on your behalf. But other times you're praying and you're waiting. You put it before God. You haven't given up. But hear the wisdom of the Lord. Sometimes it's going to require prayer and fasting. Sometimes it's going to be a long season. That doesn't mean that God's not answering. If anything, I believe that that's, that's how big of a mountain you're dealing with. God's, especially when God's working on hearts. When His people are So many variables, so many pieces of the wisdom of God when He moves on the hearts of people. Like one day, okay, Lord, I believe, but help me grow in knowing who you are. Help me to understand more and more who you are by your word. Faith in God is how we are to pray. Faith is how we are to hear God. In other words, we are to come in faith in God's house and say, Lord, I'm coming and I'm expecting to hear you speak to me through your word today. I'm expecting to hear you. As the word is being preached, as we come into the house of God, as we worship you, I'm expecting, God, that I will hear you because it's faith. Faith is how we believe his promises. Faith is how we believe his word for us. Faith is how we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Faith is how we yield to the Holy Spirit and walk in faith. It's faith to say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to yield to you today. That was why, the Lord, I believe that help me grow in the name of Help me to understand more and more who you are by your word. Faith in God is how we are to pray. Faith is how we are to hear God. In other words, we are to come in faith in God's house and say, Lord, I'm coming and I'm expecting to hear you speak to me through your word today. I'm expecting to hear you. As the word is being preached, as we come into the house of God, as we worship you, I'm expecting, God, that I will hear you. Because it's faith. Faith is how we believe his promises. Faith is how we believe his word for us. Faith is how we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Faith is how we yield to the Holy Spirit and walk in faith. It's faith to say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to yield to you today. That requires you stay active in it. You don't give up. You don't wear away, but you rely on the strength of the Lord to help you stay engaged in it. Amen. Jesus says in Mark 11, 12, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Believe God. 
how do we do that? We believe in God, His Word. We believe what His Word says. I, I've said in the past, even if we have weak faith, even if we have weak faith the size of a mustard seed, what that means is there's a potential to grow where it's no longer weak faith, but expanding, increasing faith in God. You know, maybe you might be in a place where you're saying, Lord, I have to admit it, I have weak faith. I have little faith. But here, what Jesus is saying in that, he's saying, even if you have weak faith, there's potential. And see in faith, there's potential that one day, you're going to be the one that's going to speak to that mulberry tree. And it's going to be lifted up by its roots and be cast into the sea. It's going to open up. The name of Jesus. What a power. I believe it. I can't see it. I can't see it at all right now. But I believe that you got bad news this week. And it, it wants to defeat you and destroy you. And you come with the word of God and you say, I, I, I can't see the deliverance happen. But Lord, I believe your word. I trust what your word says. So I will walk. I will talk. I will go about my life in faith. And not based on what I see. Not based on what the report is, but I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the good report. And I know, Lord, that I trust you in all of this. And my faith is in you and my hope is in you. Amen. Matthew 17, verses 20 through 21, Jesus said to them, Because of your little faith, you're not going to understand the things of God. You're not going to understand the things of the kingdom. It's going to be difficult to grasp. That's why we must have faith. We must hear the word of God and approach the word of God in faith. We say, okay, Lord, maybe you might hear the word of God and you say, okay, I'm not, okay, what does this mean? But even in that, we are to approach God's word in faith, trust in him. And so Hebrews 11, 6 says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, in other words, that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Understand this. The Bible never sets about to prove God. People who are asking, show me proof that God exists, those are not going to understand the things of God. You're not going to understand the things of the kingdom. It's going to be difficult to grasp. That's why we must have faith. We must hear the word of God and approach the word of God in faith to say, okay, Lord, maybe you might hear the word of God and you say, okay, I'm, wow, okay, what does this mean? But even in that, we are to approach God's word in faith, trust in him. And so Hebrews 11, 6 says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, in other words, that God exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Understand this. The Bible never sets about to prove God. People who are asking, show me proof that God exists, those kinds of power and see the promises of God unfold in their lives are going to be people who are servants. If you want to be great to the of God, you must be the servant of all, as Jesus said. Now, we might look at this here, and we might we might see the unprofitable servants part. That we might our eyes might stick to that, like, oh man, yeah, I'm not worthy. I'm just an unprofitable servant. But understand what Jesus is saying there, because what he responds, how he answers that, or how he closes that out, is he says, We have done what was our duty to do. When we realize as the people of God, as a child of God, there's a duty to be done. You and I have a duty unto the Lord to do in obedience to His Word. It's more than just hearing it, but it's being a doer of the Word of God, of being a servant of the Lord and of His Word. That this is our duty in the Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You, Lord, that You are here among us. Your presence is among us as we are gathered together as the congregation, Lord God, to hear your word. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. 
Lord, if you pray, we ask that you would open up our spiritual ears, that we would hear. Lord, that we would be the good ground that would receive your word and would bear fruit for you, Lord God, that you would be glorified in our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what's going on here? Jesus is responding to a request of, this, of, of faith, desire. The, the, the apostles, the disciples are saying, Lord, increase our faith. Help us to understand. Help us what it means to follow you. Help us to, because they're hearing Jesus say, when, when, except for the one that we don't ask. Lord, we thank you. Our past is behind us. upward calling in Christ Jesus. You know, Paul says this. He received from the Lord. He received from the Lord Jesus what is communicated to us in the Word of God. It's what He delivers. We know it from the Gospels. We know it also from the Apostle Paul as the Lord revealed it to him, gave him this revelation. God bless them. Amen. I thought there'd be bigger applause, but I was waiting for that. <laughs> Y'all know your love. Yes. All right. Luke 17. So we are looking here at Luke 17. Father, God bless them. Amen. I thought there'd be bigger applause, but I was waiting for that. <laughs> Y'all know your love. Yes. All right. Luke 17. So we are looking here at Luke 17. He says, "You forgive them. Uh, seven, you forgive them seven times in a day. Even if they say, if they repent seven times, you keep forgiving them." They're saying, "Lord, increase our faith." And so then he responds, here, "This is what it looks like to see your faith increase. Absolutely, you will see the mulberry tree being pulled up from the very roots." And being planted into the sea, that it would obey you. That's some powerful faith there. Because of his love for us. And even betrayals stopped the work of God, the plan of God. His part was known, prophesied that it would occur. The same night when he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you take the bread and break it? Thank you, Lord. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast. I've seen In the same way, Jesus took the cup. The cup represents his blood. Brought us into the new covenant. Brought us into the family of God. This is where, because of what Jesus has done on the cross, not only are we forgiven, not only are we clean, not only is our past gone, but we are accepted as family. Also, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do 
as often as you drink it, do this remembering me, remembering the relationship that we have, remembering all that he's done for us. And he loves you. Would you drink it? You know, when you're going through things, where do you go? You can't pay somebody to make you feel good. You can't go buy something and feel that for a little while. But God, He takes that all away. You know, as long as you let Him in, He will release all that. As long as you say, Lord, forgive me, forgive them for what they've done, and let me keep walking. As long as I have you in my life, I'm going to be okay. Amen. I'm going to keep the sun's going to keep shining. You know? So, like I said, there's a lot of hurts and pains. Whether it was the past, whether it was the future, whether it's right now. You've got to release so, But you've got to give it to Him. Because He's the only one that can do it for you. You know, He's a loving God. He loves you with all His heart. He shows us what we need. Lord, we exalt you. Exalt you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, your presence here, your power. Lord, strength, we trust you, God. We're calling out to you. We're asking you, Father, by your Spirit, keep Jesus. By your Holy Spirit, your anointing, your power to touch hearts. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. So, Lord, we're asking. We're asking, Lord God, that you would intervene. Lord, intervene in our lives. Lord, change our own hearts. Soften our own hearts. If there's areas where we where we sense that there's a hardness forming. Lord, soften our own hearts. Lord, let the sister Kim. We have something. done it for you at the cross. And so we honor you today, Lord God, for the cross and for the life-giving blood that you have given to us to wash us whiter than snow and to remind us that you love us, to remind us that you're for us, to remind us, Lord God, that you're with us. And so we have this hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. The power to salvation. The power to save. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves you. God is for you. He has a future and a plan. Hold on to that hope. It's a living hope. Because our Christ is alive. Amen. Amen. Sitting on the throne at the right hand of the Father. Amen. 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 God bless you. By family. By things that happen. If there's areas where we where we sense that there's a hardness forming, Lord, soften our own hearts. Lord, fresh. Lord God, that you bring restoration. Lord 
God of that relationship. Strengthen James, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help him, Lord God, by your grace. Him and his daughter, Lord God. Him and his family, Father. Thank you that you would restore, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you're able. You're able to do. You're able to do. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, with you all things are possible. Nothing is too difficult. This is something beautiful that God has given to the child of God. It's a reason for us to say that we can't have God's presence with us. Everywhere we go, always, continually, we have His presence, the Holy of Holies. That we can, that's 12 elders of Israel and then the 12 apostles making up the 24 elders and it says they fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever and they cast their crowns before the throne these